Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Butcher. This is video 8.4, Multiplying and Dividing Rational Expressions. Now, the simplified form of a rational expression is one that has no common factors in the numerator and denominator. So if I had a times c divided by b times c, like 2x over 5x, um, I could cancel out the c's here. So that equals a over b. Or if I had a little group, a plus c times b, over a plus c times d, I could cancel out the whole groups and have b over d. But just please note, you can only cancel out things that are being multiplied. So this is a group being multiplied by b and a group being multiplied by d, so it's okay to cross them out. We couldn't do, if I had a plus c over b plus c, I could not cross out just those c's because they're not being multiplied, they're being added. I'll prove it to you. If I had 2 plus 5 over 1 plus 5, then that should be 2 plus 5 is 7, 1 plus 5 is 6, so 7 sixths. But if you crossed out the 5s, you get 2 over 1, and 7 over 6 does not equal 2. It's not right. It's not, it's not true. It does not work. Do not cross out through addition or subtraction, only multiplication. And entire groups, it's okay, but not through the groups ever. If you do that, you're killing kittens. And this has been on my door for a couple weeks now, but I want you to take note of it. Every time you do something like that, a kitten dies. And so whenever I see that mistake being made, I'm going to refer to it as dead kittens. So please, no, kit no dead kittens. Do not kill any kittens in my class. Thank you. Okay, so the rules... For, solve, or for simplifying these problems is always factor first. Always. You have to factor first. Well, did mean to turn it pink, but that's cool. Always factor first, and then cross out any common factors. Um, do not cross out through things. Remember, we cannot cross out through addition or subtraction. So you have to factor first. Then you leave your final answers in factored form. I don't want to see everything all foiled out and multiplied out. That's ugly and not simplified. So let's do some example problems now. Okay, simplify this. 4x plus 16 over 5x plus 20. So the rules says to factor first. So for 4x plus 16, both of those have a 4 in common. And then when I factor out that 4, I have x plus 4, because 16 is 4 divided by, or 4 times 4. And then 5x plus 20 have a 5 in common. Take out the 5, and then we have x plus 4, because 5 times 4 is 20. And now that we have matching groups, we can cross out the groups. And so our final answer is 4 over 5. Simplify this one. x squared plus 6x plus 9 over x squared minus 9. So we need to factor first. To factor this top one, we need... Factors of 9 that add to 6, and that would be 3 and 3. So this is x plus 3 times x plus 3. On the bottom, we have a well-known difference of squares. So we have x plus 3, x minus 3. And now that it's fully factored, a group of the x plus 3s, just one set, can cancel out from top to bottom. And our final answer is going to be x plus 3 on top and x minus 3 on bottom. Notice that I'm not crossing out these x's or the 3's because it's they're part of groups. You can put the parentheses in your answer if it makes you feel better. Can't cross out through the groups. Only whole groups themselves. Here's another one. 8x cubed minus 2x squared all over 4x squared minus x. Remember first thing is we have to factor it. On the top our greatest common factor, 2, goes into both of these, and x squared goes into both of these. So if I divide a 2x squared out of 8x cubed, I have 4x, and then the minus. And then if I take 2x squared out of 2x squared, I just have 1. On the bottom, these both have an x in common, so I can factor out an x. And then if I take an x out of 4x squared, I have 4x. And I have the minus, and then x divided by x is 1. So now you can see we have a group that matches, that can cancel out. We also have 
x squared on top and x on bottom. So one of those pairs of x's can cancel out as well. So all I have left now is 2x on the top, nothing on the bottom, so it equals 2x. All right, now we're going to do some multiply together. Um, remember, when you're multiplying, like if I had 1 half times x over, I don't know, y, you just multiply top times top and bottom times bottom. So it's 1 times x over 2 times y. So the tops just combine and the bottoms combine like that. And then, once you combine everything, you can cancel things out just like we were on the simplifying problems. Okay, so here's one. We have 4x times x minus 1 all over x plus 3 times x minus 1, and then times, and then we have x plus 3 times x minus 2 all over 4x. This one's already factored for you, so you can skip that step. But when we're multiplying, because this is all multiplication, you can just do top times top and bottom times bottom. So we end up with 4x and x minus 1 and x plus 3 and x minus 2 all together in the numerator. And then in the denomina denominator, we have x plus 3 and x minus 1 and 4x. And now we can look at what can we cancel out. So I've got a 4 here and a 4 here. They cancel out. 4 divided by 4 is 1. I have an x here and an x here. Those can cancel out. I have an x minus 1 here and an x minus 1 here, so those can cancel out. There's an x plus 3 here that cancels out with that x plus 3, and all that is left of all of this is x minus 2. So that is the simplified version. Okay, now here's one that you do have to factor. We have x squared plus 8x plus 16 here. Two things that multiply to get 16 that add to get 8 would be 4 and 4, so x plus 4 and x plus 4. And then I'm multiplying, so I have this part here. 16 goes into 64 four times, so we could factor out the 16 and we'd have x squared minus 4. And that's a difference of squares. So I've got times 16 times x plus 2, x minus 2 because that's how you factor a difference of squares. And that is all, I'm just putting it all together as one numerator, because we're multiplying. For our denominator, we need to factor this. Factors of 8 that add to 6 would be 4 and 2. So we have x plus 4 and x plus 2. We have times, and then x squared minus 16 is a difference of squares, so x plus 4 and x minus 4. And that's all together as the denominator. So now we can start crossing out. These can go, and these can go, the x plus 2's can go, and what we are left with is 16 and x minus 2, leave it factored, all over x minus 4. That is your final simplified version. Alright, here's another one. This one needs to be factored too, and I gave you a harder um, trinomial here to factor because I have 2x squared minus x minus 3, so I've got a, a coefficient of 2. So remember, in this case, we multiply 2 times negative 3, and we get negative 6. And we need factors of negative 6 that add to get our middle term of negative 1. Factors of negative 6 that add to negative 1 would be negative 3 and positive 2. So you take those two numbers and you split the middle term. We have 2x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 3. And then we group. Out of 2x squared minus 3x, an x will factor out, and we have 2x minus 3 left. Out of 2x minus 3, nothing will factor out. So I'm going to put plus 1 and then write my 2x minus 3. So that factors to x plus 1 as one of the factors because we have the x and the plus 1. And then the other factor is the 2x minus 3. All right, so that is this factored. Then we have over x squared plus x. You can factor an x out of that and have x plus 1. It's times, so I'm just going to continue it out. Out of 4x squared plus 4x, I can factor out a 4x. And then I have x plus 1 left. And out of 2x plus, minus 3, I can't factor anything out, so that is what it is, 2x minus 3. 
So now that this thing is fully factored, we can just start crossing stuff out. x plus 1 can go. 2x minus 3 can go away. This x and this x will cancel. And so our final answer is 4 and x plus 1. Leave it factored. That's your final answer. All right, and then these last examples that we're going to do are division problems. But when you're dividing, if I had 1 half divided by 3 fourths, all you have to do is flip the second problem, or the second, sorry, the second fraction. So take the reciprocal of it and multiply, because multiplying by the reciprocal is the same thing as dividing. And then it's easy because you go across the top and across the bottom, and then you can simplify as necessary. So just remember, when it's division, all you have to do is flip the fraction that's next to the division sign only, and then multiply. Okay, here's a division example. x squared plus 4x plus 4 divided by x plus 3, and then all divided by x plus 2. So I'm going to take this second part, turn this division into a times, and flip this. The reciprocal of x plus 2 would be 1 over x plus 2. That's kind of messy, so let's clean it up and let's factor it while we're doing that. Um, factors of 4 that add to 4 would be 2 and 2 x plus 2, x plus 2. And then we have x plus 3 on the bottom. We're multiplying by 1 over x plus 2. So we're really just putting it all together. And then we can cancel one set of x plus 2's. So we have x plus 2 times 1, which is x plus 2 on the numerator, and the denominator is x plus 3. Just remember, the reciprocal of something, when you flip it, if it doesn't have anything, it's over 1, right? And then when you t uh, flip it, you just put 1 over. Here's another division problem. Um, I'm going to factor, and I'm going to do my flipping and multiplying all in one step. So the first thing I'm going to do is keep this on x plus 2. And then I need to factor x squared minus 5x minus 14. And factors of negative 14 that add to negative 5 would be negative 7 and positive 2. Then I'm going to turn this division into times. And so this, is, this part here is now going to be the numerator, and this part here will now be the denominator. So I'm going to factor this first. Factors of 21 that add to 10, negative 10 would be um, 7 and 3, negative 7 and negative 3, technically. So x minus 7 and x minus 3. And then factors of negative 6 that add to negative 1 would be negative 3 and positive 2. And remember, when we're multiplying, it's just this group times all these groups, so we can just put it all together. And then we need to cancel things out, so x plus 2's will go, and x minus 7's will go, and x minus 3's will go. When you have nothing left on top, you don't put 0. When things cancel out, they equal 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So you have a 1 on top, and then you have the x plus 2 on the bottom. So remember, when you cross everything out and what you have left is in the denominator, it has to stay in the denominator. Don't make the mistake of forgetting about 1 over. Okay, one more example. Um, this one actually has division and multiplication. Um, and when we divide, we flip and multiply. But it's tricky with this because you um, are only dividing by this one. So the only one that's going to get flipped is the one immediately after the division sign. The one over here after the time sign will stay um, right side up. So let's factor x squared minus 2x minus 8. Factors of negative 8 that add to negative 2 would be x minus 4 and x plus 2. And that's all over x minus 3. Then since I'm flipping this one, I'm just going to put the x plus 3 on top and the x plus 2 on bottom. And then we have times, and we have x on top, and x minus 4 on bottom. And so now it's all groups that are being multiplied together. So now we can cancel out x minus 4 and x plus 2. And um, x 
plus 3 and x minus 3 do not cancel out. So on the top, on the numerator, we have x plus 3 and x. I'm going to put the x in front. And then we have x minus 3 in the denominator. And that's what's left. So that is our simplified answer. And in honor of Pi Day coming up, here you go. One last awful pie joke. 